Mexico is embarking on a monumental project that could reshape global trade routes. With an investment of $4.5 billion, Mexico is constructing a canal that aims to rival the Panama Canal. With its strategic location and significant investment, Mexico's canal promises to reshape maritime trade routes and offer new opportunities for international commerce. In this video, we will find out more about this project and tell whether it will replace the Panama Canal or not. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get regular updates. Let's dive into the video. The Panama Canal, a landmark of global trade. The Panama Canal is one of the most amazing technical achievements of all time. It connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans and is very important for shipping. As a key link between North and South America, it is located in the small strip of land called the Isthmus of Panama. Longer rivers like the Suez or Grand Canal may be jealous, but this one is important for more than just its length. Before the canal was finished in 1914, it was very hard for ships to travel between the Americas. Ships going from Europe to the west coast of the United States or the other way around had rough trips that often required long loops around the southern tip of South America. The Strait of Magellan's dangerous seas, which were prone to strong storms and unpredictable currents, put ships in great danger. Alternatively, trying to get through the Northwest Passage from the north was not possible because of the thick ice that made it unusable for most of the year. The U.S. set out on a bold mission to build a canal through Central America because they needed a better way to get things done. The Panama Canal was supposed to cut journey times and distances by a huge amount, giving ships going between the two oceans a shortcut of about 12,000 kilometers. Building this engineering wonder, on the other hand, wasn't easy. Heavy work was required, and workers had to deal with dangerous terrain and temperatures that were above 40 degrees Celsius. Excavating more than 200 million cubic meters of dirt was part of the huge job, which was about as hard as building a mountain. Tragically, almost 6,000 people died while the canal was being built, showing how much was given to make it happen. Overcoming big differences in elevation along the canal's path was another task. With a difference of almost 30 meters between its highest and lowest points, new lock systems were put in place to make it easier for ships to pass. These engineering marvels let ships go up to the top of the canal and then down to their goal, getting around the natural obstacles. Even though there were a lot of problems and it cost a lot of money minus $375 million at the time, which is about $12 billion today, the Panama Canal opened in August 1914. The SS Ancon was the first ship to sail through its waters, marking the start of a new era in marine transportation. Since then, the canal has been an important part of international trade, with over 10,000 ships passing through each year carrying billions of tons of goods. Ships that use the canal pay tolls that are based on their size. This is because using this vital waterway saves ships a lot of time and distance. Even though the Panama Canal has a lot of historical value and will continue to be important, it might face competition in 2024. This shows how global trade lines are changing. Still, its lasting impact as a triumph of human creativity and persistence continues to shape the course of international trade, demonstrating how important it is even now. Reviving Mexico's Interoceanic Corridor, the CIT Project. The CIT, or Interoceanic Corridor of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, is an important part of the history of Mexican infrastructure and foreign trade. Its name may sound complicated, but its story is one of hope hardship, and coming back to life. You have to go back to the late 1800s to understand what CIIT is all about. That's when big ideas about connecting continents were first thought of. In the late 1800s, when the U.S. was starting the huge project of building the Panama Canal, another idealist, Josa de la Cruz Porfirio Diaz Mori, became president of Mexico. He wanted to connect Mexico's Atlantic and Pacific coasts. He was born in Oaxaca, which is on the southern coast. Porfirio Diaz's dream came true when a railroad line was built from Oaxaca to Veracruz. The goal was to solve traffic problems similar to those that the Panama Canal would later solve. The train, which was later called the Tren Interoceanico, opened for business in January 1907, seven years before the Panama Canal did. 
The world's trade community quickly accepted this new route, which made it easier to move huge amounts of cargo and helped Mexico's economy grow. But when the Panama Canal opened in 1914, things quickly went wrong for the railroad. Even though the Tren Interoceanico was better located and more efficient than the Panama Canal, it failed because American shipping companies preferred an American project and the Mexican Civil War caused a lot of trouble. Also, the ease of logistics of shipping goods by sea made the canal more appealing, which led to a huge drop in business on the Mexican railway. Because of this, the Tren Interoceanico got damaged and didn't work for a hundred years until President López Obrador took office in Mexico and started a new era. Under his guidance, there was a renewed push to bring the Interoceanic Corridor of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec back to life, bringing a once bustling trade route between the two continents new life. The return of CIIT not only means fixing up facilities, but also a new start on plans to improve regional connectivity and economic growth. As work to fix up and update the corridor continues, it will be ready to take back its place as a key connection between the Atlantic and Pacific, uniting countries, and ensuring future prosperity. Revolutionizing Transportation Mexico's New Rail Line In 2018, President Lopes Obrador unveiled his ambitious plan to revitalize Mexico's former railway infrastructure, aiming to create a modern corridor linking the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, rivaling the nearby Panama Canal. The project, known as the CIT, Corridor Interoceanico del Istmo de Tehuantepec, gained momentum with the announcement of three primary rail lines, Line Z, Line FA, and Line K. Despite extensive efforts, the specific meanings behind these letter designations remain a mystery. Construction efforts commenced in June 2020, marking the beginning of a transformational journey. Overgrown vegetation was cleared, age tracks were removed, and gleaming new rails were laid down. The collective length of these new rail lines is projected to exceed 1,000 kilometers, promising significant connectivity and economic opportunities for the regions they traverse. Beyond the railway itself, the Mexican government envisions the development of a series of industrial parks along its path. President Lopes Obrador's commitment to the project was further underscored by decisive actions in 2023, as the military was mobilized to secure control over a segment of railway previously held by a private entity. While negotiations for compensation followed, the government's priority was ensuring uninterrupted progress toward the CIIT's realization the ongoing debate surrounding Mexico's transportation revolution. To move forward and improve its economy, Mexico has started a huge transportation project called the Central Interoceanic Railway Corridor, CIIT. The big goal of this project is to build a modern train system that will connect Mexico's Pacific and Atlantic coasts. This will completely change the country's trade and logistics networks. Even though everyone wants things to get better, some voices don't agree, especially from indigenous groups in Oaxaca. The people in these areas have good reasons to be worried about how the CIT might hurt the environment and force people to move because of its building and use. Their worries have led to protests, which have sometimes turned physical with police and project supporters. Even with these problems, a lot of people, including government officials and business leaders, are still optimistic about the project's total benefits. According to predictions, the CIT could create 500,000 jobs and bring in a lot of foreign investment. This could lead to a big change in the economies of the places it goes. As construction goes on, people are getting more and more excited about when the CIT will finally be ready for foreign trade. New information shows that big steps have been taken toward finishing the breakwater, which means that Mexico's ambitious transportation plan is almost ready to come true. With each goal reached, the CIT moves closer to changing not only the way Mexico does business, but also its economic future. The CIT has the power to change a lot of things. It could connect faraway places, make trade easier, and lead Mexico into a new age of prosperity. Still, as the project moves forward, it is important to address the concerns of underrepresented groups and make sure everyone gains equality. It is only through sustainable practices and growth that everyone can benefit that Mexico can use the full potential of its transportation revolution. The future of the Panama Canal 
experts and people who have a stake in global trade are very interested in and guessing about the future of the Panama Canal. Some experts think that the Central Isthmus Integration Corridor could become a viable option for the Panama Canal, which could affect how it works and how important it is. If the CIT turns out to be faster and cheaper, shipping companies may decide to change their routes and use Mexico's train corridor instead of the Panama Canal. In the same way that it did with the first Mexican train a hundred years ago, this situation could make the canal less useful. Supporters of the CIT project, on the other hand, stressed it will not be a straight competitor to the Panama Canal, but rather an additional route. The Panama Canal was built to hold up to 4 million goods containers per year, but it often has trouble keeping up with rising demand. Recent problems, like water issues made worse by 2023 being Panama's driest season on record, have made things even harder for the government. To save water, the government put limits on the number of ships that could pass each day. Before, the average was nearly 40. As a result, companies had to compete harder and go to bidding wars for limited passage slots. This messed up shipping plans and left some ships stuck. With all of these problems, options like the CIT could help the Panama Canal's already limited space. By adding an extra way, the CIT could ease the load during times of high demand, making shipping more reliable and reducing problems. For example, when Panama had trouble getting water, the CIT could have sped up deliveries and made sure that things got there on time, even though conditions were bad. The Panama Canal and the CIT could work together to boost world trade and make it easier for goods to move between the Atlantic and Pacific. So, what do you think about this new Mexican project? Comment below. Like and share the video and follow us for more amazing updates. Thanks for watching.